You're about to learn a new way of playing the most common chess opening, the Italian game, and it gives you a massive attack and great opportunities to win the game quickly. I'm Grandmaster Igor Smirnov, let's rock and roll. So, the Italian game comes out of most common chess opening moves, and at this point, if both sides develop their bishops, we get the classical variation of the Italian game. Now, here white goes c3, getting ready to play d4, black counters with knight of 6 hitting this pawn, white plays d4 nevertheless, hitting the bishop and the pawn, therefore black trades, after this the bishop needs to go, and they play bishop b4 check. Now, so far it is the main line, it's been played in millions and millions of games. However, at this point, you're going to play the move that only 1% of players has played. And that is why it's gonna catch your opponents off guard. Now, naturally in this position, most players would cover their king by either a knight or a bishop, right? That's what most players would do. However, the move that you may play is king to f1. Now, a paradoxical move, because you keep your king in the middle of the board, contrary to, you know, standard chess opening rules and knowledge that you need to castle your king. However, in this particular position, the move is actually pretty decent. Stockfish says that objectively it's about equal with perfect play from your opponent's side, which they're not going to be playing. However, it also sets a bunch of interesting traps and attacking opportunities that are unfamiliar for your opponents. So, what is your idea? You wish to keep the bishop right there because surprisingly, in some variations, you want to attack it and actually capture it. Plus, you've got this strong center, which is ready to go, and after that, it's going to chase away their knight. Therefore, if they play some normal move, so to say. Let's say they just castle, right? Or let's say d6, trying to stop your, your pawn from moving forward. That is already a blunder, because you're gonna play d5, kicking this knight away, and after that knight goes anywhere, let's say knight a5, that is already a blunder. You've got this queen a4, check, and double attack to the bishop. It's easier to trade off this active knight first, and then you're going to go for this queen a4 check, double attack, and you win the bishop on the spot. Remember I've told you that in some variations we're gonna win this bishop? And now you can see how it works out. So it's not as fantastical as it seems at first. And that is why we didn't want to let our opponent trade off the bishop for our knight or bishop earlier. We wish this bishop to stay there so that we can actually win it. Now, they need to counter the check. So let's say they cover, you play queen takes b4. Now you're up a bishop. You also prevent them from castling. You put pressure to this pawn, so it's easily winning. There is also one really interesting variation. If they choose to capture this pawn on e4, uh, Stockfish recommends a paradoxical move here. Of course, you could play any, anything else. You, you could just develop, and that is also fine. But Stockfish recommends queen e1, which is quite a funny thing. It looks like you're playing some troll opening, like you shifted your king and your queen one square to the right. <laughs> and it looks absurd at first, but in reality, it makes total sense. You attack their knight, and if it goes, you're going to capture the pawn behind the knight. They can't do anything because if not, if anything, you can also, also play f3 and kick a knight anyway. So if they move the knight somewhere, you then grab this pawn, deliver a check, and you're still up that bishop, right? The bishop that you won earlier, and that is totally winning. All right, by now we know that after we play this mysterious move king to f1, the move pawn d6 is actually already a losing blunder for black. What else could they play? Well, they could just castle, or they can get greedy and grab your pawn in the middle of the board. Funnily enough, Stockfish suggests another move. Neither of these ones, and we'll talk about that in a moment as well, but for now let's just go with more standard and more human options. So let's say they just castle, which feels like a safe option, all right? If you don't know what to do, castle, right? The golden rule of chess. But in this case, it's not really applicable, because you've got this really strong center. And if your opponent does not do anything to contest it, then you just are going to push forward and chase away these knights. So first of all, d5 getting rid of this knight, after it goes back somewhere you can also push the other pawn forward, now this knight has to go, and it actually has to go back, because if it goes forward, it can be trapped there, it is surrounded by your pawns and pieces, you can go queen d4, and all of a sudden the knight is trapped. It's also like quite surprising for black, what can they do now? If they try to support it, that fails to d6, this interesting discovered uh, check and attack of this knight, if instead they try to move the knight away, then we talked about the fact that these pieces are a bit loose and you want to attack them, so you play a3, hitting the bishop. The bishop can't move because it needs to guard the knight, and they're going to lose something right here. If they play knight f5, that doesn't help as well, because after queen f4, you still have this massive attack against basically all three of these pieces, and they're definitely going to lose some of them. Therefore, they have nothing better but to move the knight backwards, and after this you can also pressure this bishop, kick it back as well, you just push your pawns forward and your attack rolls out pretty easily, 
Bishop goes back, now d6, you also keep pressing them. And after the trade, now you totally oppress them. Now after the knight goes somewhere, it doesn't matter, here or here. The fun fact is, they can't really bring these pieces out. Just look at this. They can hardly move at all. Like, even this bishop has no squares to go to. And that is why it's so easy for you to develop your attack from there. This pawn on d6 is really so annoying. Just think about this. This pawn can't move forward. The bishop can't develop. The queen can't really move. The rook cannot move. Like, this knight can hardly move. It just gives you this really easy attack. You start with bishop g5, hitting the queen. Now they need to cover it somehow. They can't move this pawn because it's been down to the king. Therefore, they need to play knight of six. And although the knight gets back into the game, but it's now pinned. Therefore, it still cannot really move. And after this, you just go knight c3 and you have complete domination. They can hardly move. Again, there are not many moves that black can play without losing the piece straight away. And I'll show you an example of continuation, which you don't need to remember, really. Like, your idea here is that you have this pin, and you can play knight to d5 on the next move. Like, yes, pp on the pp, not Shakespeare's sonnet, exactly, I understand. Besides that, you can also push this pawn forward, it's very, very powerful, kicking this knight back all the way to h8, and then possibly marching forward to h6 and opening up the king. You have a lot of easy opportunities for attack. Now, let's say they play h6. I'll show you one very interesting variation game, which you don't need to remember, but it just goes to show you how powerful your attack is and some common attacking ideas. Now, they hope for your bishop to be traded off or retreated. And in such cases, you have a number of interesting options. And here you've got queen d3. Quite a paradoxical move. Your attack is so strong that you don't want to back down. You just want to keep attacking, keep moving forward. And it creates an interesting threat, which they have nothing to do against, really. If they capture a bishop, you just play queen takes g6. And it's not a sacrifice of the queen, because this pawn is pinned down to the king. Therefore, they can't capture your queen. They have to tolerate it right here. And on the next move, you wish to play knight takes g5, and then grab this pawn on f7. If they try to stop it somehow, let's say they play knight h7, trying to guard the pawn this way, you then play h4, another very common attacking move in these lines, bringing your rook into the attack. You want to open up the h-file, or bring your knight to g5, or both. And in both cases, you're going to checkmate them very easily. If, let's say, they try to do something, like, taking doesn't make much sense, you just bring the rook into play, and you win quickly. If instead they play something like queen of 6 offering the exchange of queens, you can finish the game in style by sacrificing your queen. And on the next move, you get it back with interest. It's a discover check, and on the next move you're gonna grab the queen. And ultimately, you're up a piece, plus their position is still lousy, they still cannot bring these pieces into play, and therefore you win easily. Once you play that mysterious move king to f1, your opponent may naturally feel anxious and may indulge in overeating. In this case, your plan does not change really. You still want to push your pawn forward, chase away this knight, and ironically, you're targeting every developed piece that they have. Here we follow up with one more mysterious move, bishop to b3, which is actually very tricky. It feels like another meaningless move, similar to king f1, but in reality, it does contain a trap and it's, it's a good one to play. Now, if they play castle or pawn d6 or any trivial move, that would actually fail due to queen d4 double attack. And that was the point of moving your bishop out of the way, so that now your queen can actually hit the bishop as well as the knight. And due to the, the double attack, you're gonna win one of these pieces. So that's another nice trick along the way. Now, let's say your opponent somehow notices that and decides to drive the knight back to f6. In this case, we still are going to attack. Of course, we're down material and our king is still a little awkward, therefore, yeah, we wish to attack. We go bishop g5, threatening the knight. They go knight g6 usually, trying to support the knight by their queen. Then we play queen d4, another interesting move. This time we're gaining a tempo, attacking the bishop, as well as potentially putting more pressure to this f6 knight, which does not mean we're gonna take it straight away, but anyway, you're putting more pressure. Now, the bishop will usually drive back, and here there is another brilliant move that you can play. Literally, in the style of Paul Morphy and Mikhail Tal, you go pawn d6. You sacrifice a pawn for a couple reasons. Like, first off, you open up this diagonal for your bishop, which is cool. Secondly, regardless of whether they capture the pawn by their pawn or bishop, they're going to slow down their development. Because after this, the d-file is barricaded, therefore they can't bring this bishop out, they can't bring the queen out, therefore their rook is also stuck in the corner, and in the meanwhile, you're developing your kingside massive attack quickly. Similarly, if they capture it with a bishop, it doesn't really change the situation that much, it's all the same. The d-pawn now can't move, plus the spin is still alive, and you go knight c3, threatening rook e1 check all of a sudden. And just notice how massive your advantage in development is. 
they try to hide their king in castling and then you play h4. Another common idea which we have seen previously, that gives you some tempos hitting this knight and possibly marching forward, plus you activate your rook which otherwise is hard to use somehow. Now after they play h6, you guessed it right, we're not going to retreat. Although, you know, potentially you could retreat or trade, that would be alright, but h5 is much stronger. You really wish to just attack and notice that this rook, which was totally passive just two moves ago, now becomes a key attacking piece. You wish to open up the h file after this trade and deliver a checkmate. So yeah, don't judge a rook by its cover. Now, what can they do now? Like, taking here and allowing this pawn takes is totally devastating, because not only we have this open file, notice that we're hitting this pawn which is also pinned by our bishop, and we threaten something like knight takes g5. That is absolutely horrible for black. Therefore, they'll have to do something about this knight. And the only like, square which doesn't lose something straight away is knight h8, <laughs> like quite funnily. And now, again, you could just drop the bishop back, that would be fine but much stronger just to keep attacking. Your advantage in development activity is so strong that you just wish to go forward. You go knight d5, adding one more attack to this pinned knight on f6. What can they do now? Not much really. The knight can't move. In this case, they're going to lose this queen on d8. And otherwise, if they don't do anything, you're going to capture right here. If they take on g5, then you push the pawn forward, h6, threatening here. And now what can they do? Not much really, they can't accept this pawn because now knight takes f6, check to the king, and it's gonna be a pretty quick checkmate, double check, and then checkmate, something like this. If instead your opponent decides to grab this knight on d5, then you've got a hard choice, because the move that comes to mind first is queen takes g7 on checkmate, and certainly that's enough, but I think it's not the best move to play, because it's such a rare opportunity to deliver a pawn checkmate. Plus, it's really absurd that in the middle of an intense battle, your side pawn just decided to step up, take the initiative, and just marched forward and literally delivered checkmate by itself, saying, hey, you all guys are useless, I'm gonna get the job done. I understand that sometimes calculating and visualizing such variations may be a bit difficult. People often ask me how to calculate for more than two or three moves ahead. And I've got a free masterclass where I explain to you how I think while playing chess and how you can steal my thinking process. So if you're interested, I'll drop the link below the video in the description. As always, at some point we need to address the elephant in the room, how about Stockfish? Stockfish says that black shouldn't castle, we know that in this case white rolls out their attack. And knight takes e4, although possible, gives white a lot of attacking opportunities and it's hard to survive for black there, they have to be super precise in their defense. Therefore, Stockfish advises black to just play d5, ignore this pawn and simply allow the trade and this way blockade the center so that white can't push the pawn forward anymore and chase away this knight. In this case, you're going to play knight c3, bringing the knight out, attacking this knight on d5 twice, and setting a few cool traps along the way. Like, first off, they will probably notice that the, this knight is attacked. And they can also capture right here on c3 with either a bishop or a knight. Plus, after the trade, they can actually go ahead and win the pawn, plus threaten your queen. However, this fails due to queen e1, which is a check as well as a double attack of the knight, and they're going to lose this playful pony on the next move. Therefore, that's not a good option for black. Now, Stockfish still recommends for black to capture by the bishop to not waste time. But what if Stockfish is out of stock and your opponent plays a more natural move, knight takes c3? It's hard to believe, but this is a, quite a big error. Now, after the trade, this time we hit the bishop, and after he takes here on c3, black is very optimistic. He thinks that you're just playing these weird moves, you're moving the king to the middle, now you're losing the pawn, plus he's attacking the rook, this pawn on d4. However, there is a big upset coming. You play queen to b3, and after this, there is no turning back for black, because this time it's a double attack to this f1 pawn and to the king, plus the bishop on c3. This trap actually works in the main line of the Italian game, and here it works quite similarly. Therefore, they need to address these threats somehow, let's say they decide to bite the bullet, and then you play bishop takes f7 check, the king needs to move. Now, it has to go to f8, the other two options are just bad. Going king d7 would fail to queen e6 checkmate, and king e7 fails to this skewer. Therefore, king to f8 is the only decent move, and then we play bishop a3, which almost checkmates black, but they still have one move to cover, knight to e7. And after that, you play another brilliant move, the bone cloud attack improved. You actually move your king to e2. 
unlike the Bone Cloud, in this case, it wins the game. Now, your point is just to include your Rook into the attack, plus you're hitting this Bishop on A1. And temporarily, Black is actually up a whole Rook. However, the problem is, first off, you're threatening their Bishop, but the major problem is their King. It's so exposed and vulnerable to all sorts of attack. If you could only bring your Queen closer somehow, that can put together a quick checkmate. In some lines, like, say you can drop the bishop back and play queen of 7 checkmate, or include your knight into the attack and then also free up the square f7 for your checkmating attack. So it's really dangerous for black. For example, if they decide to save this bishop by playing bishop takes d4, then you can actually include the rook into play, threaten the bishop. It can't move away easily because it's pinned down to the queen. If they try to support it by c5, you can go ahead and just capture the pawn, it's still pinned, and you overpower black and win the game. Either you grab the bishop and keep your attacking, or if they accept it, then rook takes d8 is checkmate in 1. And if you want to know my two main rules to reach the 2000 rating level faster than you ever thought possible, check out this video.